Week 23 is here and you are listening to the Stockinvest.us podcast Trading Tips with Jim. Where we try to teach you one uh, trick or the other in how to beat the market. And in the $1,000 challenge, $1,000 has currently become $3,197. Up more than three times. More about that at the end of the podcast. And please remember, like and subscribe to make sure that you can follow this podcast series. For the week ahead of us, uh, there are uh, a few items uh, on the economic agenda. And the main of them is on Friday, where we'll have the May job report numbers. But before delving into that, let's scroll a little bit back to something I said before May. I told you usually the situation is uh, come May, stay away, it's an old saying. And looking at the index, we can say that Nasdaq, for instance, and S&P 500 is way above what they were in uh, in the beginning of May, meaning that they have outperformed during May month. So is the saying wrong or could there be more to it? Last week, I told you a little bit about how many buy signals, how many stocks actually went up during the week compared to going down. And just to follow that up, one index that you can look on is SPXV. It's an index measuring all stocks, for instance, at S&P 500 with an equal weight. Uh, and not weighted by the size of the company because we know that the Magnificent 7 has been doing very, very good lately uh, over the last few years. Uh, Take company like Nevida, Meta, all of them has been doing very good, pushing the index up. But if you look at the weighted, equally weighted index, for instance, for S&P 500 called um, SPXW, well, that one shows that stock actually started to fall by end of April and have been falling over May. Meaning that there has been a falling trend for the general amount of stocks. And you probably noticed that to your uh, portfolio as well. And if you look at Nasdaq, it's even more so the case. Market has mainly been driven by the big companies which have higher weight into the index, while most stocks actually been struggling and one thing i try to answer in uh, the weekly podcast is uh, trying to say what will happen during the week because we know from risk reward that it's easier to make money in the upturn market than in the downturn market and <clears throat> before a week start you should always uh, do that small thought experiment to yourself what do i think about the week ahead of us because if you expect to be a very good week, maybe you should be a little bit more um, risky on your trades. While if you expect a bad week, maybe you should do some risk reduction. That is how you make money. And as we always say at stockinvest.us, increase your gains, reduces your loss, uh, reduce your losses. That is how you will make money in the long run. Become uh, Because easy come, easy go. So, uh, just to sum up that uh, small anecdote, if we look at May, isolated, uh, and looking at the broad amount of stocks, stocks were actually falling in May, while the big one has been rising. And last week I told you the main emphasis would be on the inflation numbers, and the inflation numbers, they came in on Thursday and Friday, showing that inflation is still high, came into somewhat uh, expectation, but way, way higher than the market. Uh, that uh, that what um, the Fed wants, so we are still at high. And diving even deeper, you will show the signs of increase in uh, inflation moving forward. That has been my bet. I was the first to tell you, as far as I know, I told you many, many years ago, how inflation would come, the reasons why it would come, how it would play out, and we even in the early stages we heard uh, uh, yell and go about transitory transitory but you heard it first here in this podcast that is why you maybe should subscribe and like the podcast now uh, my bet is that inflation will continue upwards 
a part of me says that we will get into a very, very bad uh, period of inflation, leading to stagflation, which is increased inflation and increase in unemployment rate. And unemployment rate is the numbers that will come on Friday. Currently, it's sitting at 3.9 uh, and it's expected to come somewhat in over the same. About unemployment, uh, unemployment, uh, unemployment rate, you have to understand that there is more to the numbers. There is something called healthy unemployment, uh, unemployment rate and uh, unhealthy unemployment uh, rate. What has happened uh, is somewhat the same uh, like we see in um, the index that I just explained that uh, S&P, yes, it's up, but if you look at the general trend, it's going down. So behind these numbers is many, many factors that should worry uh, a lot. Some of these factors are the fact that uh, government has been spending insane amount of money to grow their sector. So we have a vast influx of money, money printing. This money goes into uh, public sector growing the public sector and the public sector sadly to say uh, is only an expense if you look at it that way so that uh, accounts for a lot of it the other thing is how they measure numbers and uh, a lot of people have decided to stay away from the workforce due to the increase in unemployment benefits and other type of benefits staying outside of uh, the physical workforce giving on the paper good numbers but in uh, general, uh, there are more to the numbers than what you see. If, uh, and I told you also this, feels uh, somewhat like a repetition uh, many times, but I told you that what you would see in the quarter numbers and what you should pay attention to uh, in regards of quarter numbers, told you this, I think, the last three, four quarters, is how the CEOs will say that profit is under pressure. And we read this across all the board now. Uh, again, you heard it first here at uh, this podcast. But McDonald's boss, for instance, said uh, that uh, uh, the profit margin is really shrinking. And most bigger companies are doing a lot of restructuring to get uh, uh, into a better position. Shutting down shops. They're actually shutting down more shops that they are opening. Uh, and the restructuring a lot, a lot of different causes, but the main cause is that the profit margin is really shrinking. You can only offset price increase on a person, on the, uh, the, the spending consumer to a certain level. And at some point, the customer just stops buying coffee or pizza or stop buying uh, certain groceries in the stores. And uh, over the last uh, two, three weeks with court results from uh, big uh, store companies, they say all the same thing. They see consumer behavior is changing. We are cutting down on a lot of things. Even Heinz, uh, the ketchup producer, noticed a huge change. This change currently among most companies are between four to 7% change in behavior. But one thing that uh, is typical for these things is that the consumer behavior starts to change, uh, change slowly and suddenly it hits with full impact when there is no more saving. When your credit card is fully max blown, there is more mon no more money to get. Your behavior changed drastically and you stop going to restaurants, you stop buying, you stop going to cinema, you stop a lot of things, you default on your bills, etc, etc. Everything come crashing at once. So here is my prediction uh, that unemployment number may be uh, somewhat in line on Friday, but from this point on, they should really increase very, very fast. All the negative effects on, uh, on the economy uh, will have to start to come. They, they cannot keep printing the amount of money they do. Uh, and even uh, the most uh, money printing friendly people are saying that maybe we are getting uh, a, a little bit ahead of ourselves in terms of money printing. Uh, just uh, uh, for comparison, I had an article about Norway. Norway has been increasing uh, the money, uh, available money in the market by 8% every single year. That is something that causes inflation because more money 
chasing fewer goods is usually what uh, happens. And <coughs> about the uh, uh, profit margins, so you cannot take more out on the end consumer. What you do is you start to uh, reduce the size. So the bottle goes from 1.25 to 1 liter or from 1 liter to 0.75 trying to get the same price because these are mechanisms to work by or you reduce the quality. You start to replace a lot of the items that you have in your product with cheaper items to maintain your profit margin. Uh, it's uh, called shrinkflation and uh, shrink inflation. Well, that was uh, quite much saying what I tried to build up here was an argument for why I think that we will see a huge increase in unemployment rate moving forward. And uh, to add to that, so the argument is that the companies, they have not tried all avenues to uh, keep their profit margins, they're shutting down sh uh, stores. These stores, people that get unemployed, they get picked up by the, uh, by the government, putting more money into the governmental sector, but they can only do this to a certain extent before it becomes a real issue and everything comes together at some point. Last week we had inflation numbers. The inflation numbers, as I said, they were still high. They were uh, among expectations. But if you look what <clears throat> now the expert says about next year's interest rates, when will they start to cut the interest rates? So everyone are now at 2025 <clears throat> level, more or less. There is less optimism that interest rates will be cut. Like the expert said, oh, we will start early, early 2024 to cut interest rates. But in this podcast, you heard it, it will not happen and it will not happen anytime soon. And when they finally cut, most people, experts, again, the experts, thinks it will be less and not so much. Meaning that you will have to live with high interest rates for quite some time. Now, why all these arguments? Because we are doing a stock trading. Maybe we shouldn't care so much about interest rates, but we do know that high interest rates put a toll on the stock market in general, and money uh, don't have that same influx in the market. Money flows into the stock market when there is an expectation of interest rates being low because you are chasing the higher return. And if your belief is that the return will not be there, well, Suddenly, if everyone starts to pull out, things can come to a very abrupt end. And that brings me uh, more or less to the conclusion of this argument. I think we should be prepared for a possible very, very hard scenario moving forward. Still, we can be uh, picked up by a few things. A few things can come our way. Uh, and the market just continue upwards. I will not be surprised if Nasdaq goes straight to 20,000, but I will not be surprised if we get into a really hammering fall we are, where we again should see increased volatility, huge stock movements up and down during the week, and that is where you, if you are trading, can make money. And here comes another little uh, anecdote. Uh, over the last few weeks, I've been working on some algorithms trying to predict certain movements within stock. I identify a few stocks which, according to my algorithms, should be tradable. And I started to trade by the algorithm. Very happy to say that so far, it is doing the right uh, thing and it will do even better so if the volatility increases because that is one of the things that make trading systems better when they can uh, when you have a flat movement it's very hard to predict but if you have a lot of ups and downs it's much easier to start to find patterns and predict the next move I will get back to this one. It's a very simple strategy that I use. I buy a certain stock because I've identified a few stocks with high probability will move in a certain pattern within a few hours. Uh, so I've done the same thing. Did it last week, did the week before. I buy at open and I put my stop loss uh, already only chasing 1.3%, but day after day it's been kicking out in two times been wrong that was the two reddest days but it was very close instead of 1.3 it reached 1.2 i had that uh, profit limit at 1.3 percent we'll get back to that so if you're interested i will say the third time this podcast remember to subscribe and like so you can hear more about it in the next few podcasts anyway uh, i expect 
uh, increased volatility in the markets and that should make for good trading decisions. Remember to learn about stop loss. There is a lot of new things in the trading world. You can uh, trail a stock upwards, you can trail with limit, profit limit upwards. Uh, and uh, you can put a stop loss underneath. There is many ways you can do uh, how to uh, make sure that you are not stuck in a bad position because the most typical pattern is you buy a stock, you maybe see it go up for a few days, then it starts to go down and you do not sell and you follow the stock downwards, 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 downwards. And when you finally give up the stock starts to, and sell, the stock starts to go up a few days later. For the week ahead of us, we are now, uh, and I forgot, uh, I forgot to say that I was talking too fast, too much, too early. Nasdaq fell by 1.1% last week from 16,921 points back to 16,735 points. That is 7,000 uh, resistance line was a little bit harder. But not a big fall, 1.1%, we can live with that. Dow Jones also fell uh, by 0.98%, ending the week at 38,686%. There is lots and lots of support below today's level at Nasdaq. Uh, and last week I said, I, if I remember correctly, I said that uh, it can go both ways, but I don't think it will go by much. And I uh, do think I said I thought it would have a slight fall. I will repeat uh, the same uh, state uh, that uh, I think there is a higher chance of uh, stocks falling for the week at was than actually rising. My bet is that we will have a red week. It will be more than last week with 1.1%. Uh, but again, this can change a lot. I expect more volatility. Now I gave you the background uh, about uh, profit margins, high interest rates. I tried to build up a slight argument why I think that we are in a rocky uh, period ahead. But the main thing I think that you should keep an eye on is again tendencies of escalation in the Ukraine-Russia war. There is much harder words, uh, there is much more pressure, we see it all over now. Uh, Ukraine has been allowed to shoot rockets into Russia, they are given ammunition to shoot into Russia, uh, and uh, everything is slipping more up, uh, and uh, uh, Germany, for instance, wants to call in one million uh, reservists, Poland is very aggressive, France even uh, saying that they are ready to do everything, send soldiers uh, to Ukraine. Things are again escalating at a very, very uh, hard pace. And this can suddenly out of the blue increase uh, really fast. If this happens, you can uh, bet on one thing, oil prices to go up. Uh, stock market to go down. One place to have a risk reduction is maybe to be in the energy sector. And OPEC will also uh, discuss further. They are uh, announcing that uh, they are most likely not to cut production to keep price level up. But again, I see a high potential that energy prices might push uh, uh, upwards or at least hold very, very good. And uh, my favorite gold, uh, as you know, I've been in gold uh, quite a long time. I advised you when gold was uh, $1,600 per ounce to get into gold. I did it myself, currently sitting at $2,345 per ounce. Uh, and I think very, very soon we will hit $2,500. I only see upside currently, upside for gold. $2,500 was the target. We was up at 2,440, if I remember somewhat correctly. I think 2,500 is very, very close by. And I have a feeling that again will rise the target of gold. Maybe even invest a little bit more. 19 minutes into the podcast, let's wrap up a few other things and get to the $1,000 challenge. Last week I said I thought 10-year treasury will go up and 10-year treasury went up. It went up by uh, by the week overall. It was up by 0 0.05 or only 1.1%. Part of the week was much higher, but then it fell a little bit back. I expect 10-year treasury will just to go up as more numbers will come in. 
what the market is hoping a little bit for is increase in unemployment rate because it means that there will be less pressure on the economy and there will be less reason to keep uh, interest rates high or even increase them. We will see Friday will be the number, by the way. Oil down one dollar, was seventy-eight dollars last week, currently sitting at seven excuse me, seventy-seven dollars, doing just very, very fine. Buy and sell signals is the one thing that I like to point out because this will give you an idea about how um, things are across all stocks. Analyzing more than, uh, in this case, it's more than 26,000 stocks qualified for these analyses. Currently, all of them are giving 31% are giving buy signals. That is more or less in line with last week. Nasdaq increased a little bit from 28 to 30% are currently giving buy signals. So how do they get the buy signals? If a stock is way too oversold, it usually uh, give uh, room for upturn. And I think now we have the, the big players running. I think a few of these stocks, which has been bombed very hard, NEO being one of them, I think we will see stocks uh, like this have a better week in general. I would think that the best bet not going for Meta or some of the bigger ones, but try some of the secondary stocks because now the investors will look for a possible arbitrage. They will look for a place where there is a potential upside. I think stocks like Fate, Neo, uh, XBEV, uh, even Tesla, um, and uh, several biotech companies will have a great week, I think. New York Stock Exchange, 41% are giving buy signals. That is a little bit high. London, 36. Uh, Frankfurt, 36. Tokyo, 34. While Chesson remains steady at 20% buy signals. So what does all of these numbers say? They say that we are still at the upper end. There is no obvious buying opportunity here. If anything, I would say that there is a slight buying opportunity in Chesson, China, if you are into trading uh, Asian stocks. But in general, there is no indicators in these numbers saying that there is a general, general good buying opportunity, meaning that we are in a, if these numbers were very low, uh, I would be very optimistic, but they are at the upper end. The index is at the upper end. Uh, the argument again just goes to a bit more rocky moves ahead. Now, what you all have been waiting for, or at least many of you have been waiting for, is the $1,000 challenge. So what happened last week? I got out of Snap after a super nice profit. I told you last week I would buy Fate Therapeutics. The market was closed on Monday. I got Fate Therapeutics on Tuesday, bought it for $3.57. $3.57. I got into Fate Therapeutics. With the $3,124 I had made so far over the last, now what will be eight, eight months or something. Fate uh, was a bit up and down, then down, down, down. But uh, at uh, Friday I had somewhat good day ending the week at 369 uh, uh, by the week. And here, I don't know if it's fate, but uh, I was looking for a stop loss uh, for fate. I knew that under 340, things would start to be a bit shaky, uh, but you don't want to put your stop loss at 340, the 340 support. You want to be a little bit below. I put my stop loss at uh, 337. Didn't pay too much attention to the markets. Uh, and uh, slightly checking, I saw that Fate Therapeutics was at 335 and I took it for granted that my stock was sold. Now going to check, uh, going to check uh, the, the account and Fate was not sold. It was still in my account. Fate fell all the way to 334 before bouncing up. I have no idea why it is uh, didn't get sold. I even sent a small um, quest uh, to uh, interactive brokers, which I use for, for this trading, uh, asking why, because I'm curious, why wasn't it triggered when 
there were uh, stocks sold at lower level but this is sometimes the case with um, with um, stop losses i should probably have put a trigger limit first and a hard limit trigger is when it starts to sell and uh, the the the, the trigger limits when it starts to sell and the hard limit is where last sell with I only had last sell. I will update you when uh, they reply uh, about it. I just got notification that it's in the customer system and that they will get back to me. So I'm still uh, with fade stocks. Maybe lucky for me because they are up 3.5% uh, as fade currently sit at 3.69. And fate uh, looks very good. I stay in fate. Uh, I will not sell it as is because it's looking very, very good to me. I think there is a huge potential upside in fate therapeutics. So uh, fate will uh, continue this week. Do I think 369 is a good uh, buying level? Yes, I think 369 is a good buying level with a potential high upside. But this stock is more risky than much other stocks that we got have and expect just move uh, strong movements in the stock up and down five six seven eight percent during a day is total natural for a stock like fit therapeutics so the one thousand dollar challenge is currently sitting at three thousand one hundred ninety seven dollars and sixty three cents to be accurate now we are 26 minutes into the podcast it's time to wrap it up if anyone followed my stop loss, so the stock uh, got uh, sold, uh, then I'm uh, sorry about that. Should be my fate too, but maybe I was just lucky. We will see how fate will do in the week ahead of us. But I find it to be one of the stocks with a potential upside. Maybe you are not into fate, maybe you don't care so much about buy signals, maybe you don't care about so much uh, about long-term trends, maybe you only want to know what stock should I buy right now. And by the way, while remembering this, we made a boot at stockinvest.us where you can ask the boot. We are continuing to programming to make it smarter and smarter and it is getting a lot smarter. It's built on the GTP4 engine, which currently is measured to an IQ, uh, IQ of 155. Quite good, I would say. Uh, for sure, a lot smarter uh, than most of us. Now, uh, we built in uh, a lot of things. And one of the questions that I see return uh, over and over again comes again in more or less every chat session uh, because we, we look at the ses uh, chat sessions to see where it goes wrong so we can fix it. And almost all of them ask, so what stock should I buy? What? How much can I make if I buy these stocks? What can I do? You have to learn uh, to read uh, charts to see the potential. Uh, and I will end the podcast with a few uh, tips. Because this idea that you can just ask anyone and you'll get all your answers and the world will be fine is just idiotic. It's just a way to lose money. Even what I say in this podcast, you should uh, consider it three times. Make up your mind. It's just additional information in your decision making process. Learn how to read charts because charts are indeed much more simpler than you think and especially at stockinvest.us where we have added a lot of things into the chart to make it more intuitive and easier to read and in worst case just copy the chart and pass it to ChatGTP and ask ChatGTP to tell you what's in the chart. It will manage uh, to some degree, not all of it because we have many items which are not standard in any chart and is invented by stockinvest.us. But on the right, heights, uh, right hand side, you will find some gray bars next to the price line. This is accumulated volume. It just means how many people have been buying and selling. And when you hear about support resistance levels, they usually come from either you generate numbers through Fibonacci, uh, etc. But the best one that's been the best for the last 20 years, uh, as far as I know, and is my personal favorite, is accumulated volume. It tells you much more about the real support and resistant numbers. You will see that these usually group around round numbers. It's just about psychology, 360, 380, 
four especially etc if we use these numbers but if you are in a stock and you wonder how much will the stock uh, go up during the week i would look at the chart i would see okay up first off is it an upward trend is it downward trend is it even looking like it will go up if the stock goes up where will it meet the highest level of resistance again talking about these gray bars in the right hand side where will it meet the most resistance because that is usually where it will turn down it will turn down get some momentum try to break up again and that is why you hear sometimes hear the terms was not able to break the resistance at yatta 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 you want to know all these things because if you think your stock can go 20% but meets resistance already after 5% just give me one solid argument why it should go to 20%. You will find stocks and these are the stocks that we are trying to uh, hunt here in the $1,000 challenge where we have a high risk. Stocks with little resistance above with the potential to float easy if they get the momentum in the back to go upwards. Did I do any metal detecting last week? I did just a few days. I found only a few nice things, so I don't think I will post anything uh, this week uh, from pictures. But it's so nice to enjoy a hobby. I hope you have a hobby, and more than anything, I hope you will have a green week when you get to the end of the week that your portfolio will be much greener than the beginning of the week. Of course, Hope you will be back next week when we head into week 24. Until then, just have a super week. Bye. Welcome to StockInvest.us Stock Analysis. We remind you that trading involves a high risk of losing money, and that you should speak with a financial advisor before buying or selling any securities. You should not base your investment decision upon StockInvest.us. By using the information you agree and are held liable for your own investment decisions.